اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بسم اللہ والحمد للہ والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول اللہ وعلى آله واصحابه اجمعین All praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all his companions And to bless his entire household May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us Ameen My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam We have spoken about saving ourselves from shaitan and we have made mention of how important it is to protect ourselves and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed verses in the Quran that are so powerful that we would be protected from the devil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed a verse which a lot of us would know of by heart. It is verse number 255 of Surah Al-Baqarah that is known as Ayatul Kursi. I'm sure many of us would know it off by heart. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la naum That is how it starts. It mentions the greatness of Allah, the fact that He is in absolute control. He is the protector. He is the one who protects every single one. He has knowledge of absolutely everything. So this verse, we are taught that if we were to repeat it, we would be protected from shaitan. There is a narration making mention of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, wherein he had actually caught the devil on one occasion. And what happened is the devil then taught him something the third time that this happened which means when he caught the devil the third time the devil says i will teach you something that will protect you from myself and my progeny or the rest of the shayateen and so he taught him ayatul kursi so abu huraira released him he went to muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam asking him or telling him what had happened and muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said sadaqaka wa huwa kadhub he has told you the truth on this occasion but remember he's a liar he tells a lot of lies so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection from shaitan my brothers and sisters read ayatul kursi in the morning thrice read ayatul kursi in the evening after salatul maghrib thrice try to read it once after every salah it is important because we would all like to be protected from the devil from the evil eye from shaitan from so many other things that affect mankind that we cannot see in fact to add to that the last two surahs of the quran known as al-falaq and an-nas i'm sure we would know that surah of by heart if we don't we should do something about it learn its meaning and read it and repeat it at least thrice in the morning thrice in the evening the same applies to the next surah seeking protection from Allah subhanahu or in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan from the devil and from various other aspects of evil this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guiding us he tells us my brothers and sisters it's important for us to realize the gift of Allah in order to save yourself from calamity from disaster from that which the devil whispers into your ears from the evil eye from magic from so many other superstitious items read ayatul kursi it's definitely a gift of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then we move on to something extremely interesting once again regarding spending many of us delay our acts of charity to the month of ramadan we need to realize that charity should not be delayed to the month of ramadan yes the calculation of zakah and the giving of zakah it is permissible to give it in the month of ramadan or to calculate it in the month of ramadan and indeed those acts of charity that are given in the month of ramadan the reward is definitely multiplied without a doubt but remember where there is a need prior to ramadan never ever say wait until the end of this month because when ramadan starts that's when i'm going to give my charities no if there is a need that has arisen it is very important for us to give 
upon that moment and we will get a bigger reward than having spent in the month of Ramadan because indeed the need is what made us give. Allah knows our intention. Allah will give and Allah will multiply the goodness. In fact, if we look at verse number 261 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَابِلْ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ والله يضاعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم The example of those who spend their wealth in the right cause in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is similar to a seed which means the wealth you've spent is like a seed the seed germinates seven spikes, which means the reward is being multiplied. It is growing. And on each spike, you find another 100 seeds. 100 seeds again, making it 700. This is why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, when a person spends, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala multiplies it tenfold to a hundredfold to 700 fold and beyond. The 700 is from this verse, verse number 261 of Surah Al-Baqarah. My brothers and sisters, when you spend, it can never ever decrease your wealth. Nobody has become poor because they've been charitable, because they've given in the right cause. Nobody has become poor when they've spent for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They've always received and achieved multiplication in their wealth, in their sustenance, and in fact, lots of blessings. What is the meaning of blessings? The barakah. Barakah meaning when a person has, say, a thousand dollars, that thousand dollars will last for longer than another person's ten thousand dollars because that one may not have the blessings. This is what we say when we are referring to the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we mean. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when you purify your wealth by giving it. Imagine purify. Why purify? Your heart becomes pure. It is no longer clinging to materialism. A lot of the problems that we face on earth today are connected to materialism. The fact that we love that which is material. When you can divorce yourself from that which is material or you understand the type of link you're supposed to be having with materialistic items, then you will be able to achieve true success. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this. When you have spent in the right cause, it actually cleanses you. It makes your heart clean. Everyone loves money. Everyone loves wealth. I'm sure all of us, we would love to be wealthy. But at the same time, those who have spent in the right cause are the truly wealthy. They are the ones whom when they pass away, the wealth will bear witness for them. Oh Allah, this man earned so much of wealth, but he gave it to those who were more desperately in need of it than himself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and grant us a deep understanding. This is why Allah says he will multiply it seven times, a hundred times, 700 times multiplication. Imagine today people are ready to give their money to a bank where they are earning interest in a haram way, in a prohibited way. And they would say, oh, I'm getting 6% and 10% and 20%. Allah says, hang on, that is haram. It seems to you that the wealth is multiplied, but no way. Save yourself from that which is haram. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never allow you to succeed through that which is prohibited. No way. That cannot happen. You need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spend that wealth in the right cause because Allah says when you invest it with me, you will definitely see the greatest returns. Imagine here Allah is saying 700% returns. 700%. Subhanallah. You put in $1, you get $700 instantly. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those who can spend. No matter what you have. Don't say, I'm a poor person, I cannot spend. If you have five dollars, spend one dollar. Spend 50 cents. Subhanallah. Maybe through the barakah and the blessing of that spending, you will be able to achieve 
greatness or goodness in so many different aspects of your life, including your health, including your children, including perhaps bliss in your marriage, all this connected to you spending. Many of us suffer because we are stingy, we are miserly, we are selfish when it comes to the property that Allah has bestowed upon us. So this is something very interesting and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us to save ourselves from, from spoiling the, the reward that we would be achieving after we have spent. You see, some people have a habit. What is this habit? It's a bad habit. They spend, mashallah, they give. But every little while they say, you know, I gave. You know, it was because of me that you are wealthy. Because of me, you are rich. Because of me, you are where you are today. No way. Allah says, if you say that, you have just spoiled the reward of the charity. It's because of Allah that that person has achieved. Yes, they are taught to be thankful and to show gratitude to those who have helped them indeed. Because without showing gratitude to the one who has helped you, you will never be able to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that acknowledgement must not be in the form of a re constant reminder from you who has given. No. You don't constantly remind a person or brag about it. Tell the whole world, you know, that person is rich because of me. That person is, you are rich because of Allah. So that person, if they got through you, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gave them in the first place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us wealth and may he not make us from among those who brag from among those who constantly remind those whom we've helped. You know, I helped you, you know, I gave. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 262 of Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah is asking us to protect ourselves, to save ourselves from what? To save ourselves from nullifying the reward of the charity. The ideal people are those who spend in the path of Allah, in the right cause, that which Allah has instructed you to spend in. And then they do not follow that spending with bragging or harm. They don't brag about it and they don't harm the people. Sometimes we spend on someone or we've given them some wealth and we think that that makes us entitled to make their life a misery. So I spent 10,000 rands on you, for example, or a thousand dollars on you, for example. Then I call you at two in the morning. I call you at five in the morning. I call you at midnight anytime. And I said, you know what, brother? You, I need you. I need you for this and that without considering your circumstance, your situation, where you are. And what is my excuse? The excuse I have is, but I gave you money, but I helped you, but I'm the one who helped you. Even if you are paying me a salary to work for you on a monthly basis, the time stipulated is the time that you should stick to. You do not abuse me because you are giving me a salary. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. If that is regarding a salary, remember a charity, you will never be rewarded truly for that charity or the reward of the charity will be nullified if you happen to abuse the person whom you've been charitable towards just because of that giving, that amount that you have given them. Never do that. So Allah says, those who spend their wealth in the true way and do not follow that spending with harm or with bragging about it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, number one, they will have a full reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Full reward. Why? Because you spent it and on top of that, you were humble. You didn't make it known. You didn't abuse. You didn't brag. Number one, you achieve a reward. Lahum ajruhum inda rabbihim. With Allah, the reward is registered. It's written. It's recorded. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala khawfun alayhim. Wala hum yahzanun. No fear upon them. They never need to fear. They don't need to worry. Allah is with them. They have helped others. Allah will help them. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Kana Allahu fi awni al-abdi. Ma kana al-abdu fi awni akhihi. Allah continues to assist a worshiper for as long as that worshiper continues to assist another worshiper, someone else. You help fellow human beings, Allah will help you. You help the creatures of Allah, Allah will help you. I always say, people save themselves from Jahannam, from the fire of hell, by being compassionate towards a dog and a cat. 
I'm sure you've heard of those narrations. A woman who was saved from the punishment or a man who was forgiven because he was compassionate towards a dog, for example. If compassionate, if being compassionate towards an animal got these people their freedom or saved them from the punishment of the fire or earned them forgiveness, what do you think will be the reward of being compassionate to a human being? A human being. We're not talking here about Muslims. We're talking about people who don't share your faith, but they share humanity with you. That's on a higher level than a dog and a cat. And thereafter, if the person happens to be a Muslim, then you get an even greater reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us an understanding. May Allah make us from those who can spend, even if it means a small percentage of our own wealth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La khawfun alayhim. Those people who have spent properly and they don't brag about it and they don't harm thereafter, there is no fear upon them. And on top of that, Allah says, Wala hum yahzanun. They will never be sad. Allah will protect them from sadness. So if you want to save yourself from sadness, Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, you need to spend in the cause, in the right cause. And on top of that, be humble. Allah says you won't be sad. Many of us are suffering depression, anxiety, stress, sadness. A lot of us are not charitable. Did you know that your charities will be able to help you in your health, in your wealth, in your mind, in your condition, in your children, in all aspects of your living and even in the hereafter? Here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us clearly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless these people with goodness allah will bless them with removal of sadness may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove our sadness and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance may he make us not from amongst those who are worried on the day of judgment may he make us from those who are given good news the day the angels come to take us away so then the next verse allah is telling us about how a good word a good word and forgiveness if you are to say a good word to someone speak well speak with respect use good words when talking to others and if you are forgiving towards people is far better than an act of charity after which you are bragging or you are harming Allahu Akbar. listen to what Allah says a statement of goodness, a good word, and forgiveness is better than a charity that is followed by harm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us say good words. So my brothers and sisters, you want to save yourself from difficulty, from spoiling relations. You want to save yourself from people hating you just because you didn't know how to talk to them. Speak correctly. Speak with respect. Choose the best words. Choose the most beautiful way of coming across, getting across. How do you want to communicate with people? Think about it. Allah says, say a word that is beautiful. It is actually it is actually very good for you. It will benefit you in so many ways. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also uses the term maghfirah. Maghfirah here meaning forgiveness. And it would refer to forgiving others. When you forgive people or when you seek the forgiveness of Allah, that is known as istighfar. Istighfar meaning seeking the forgiveness of Allah. That is a topic on its own. But here, forgiving people. If I can forgive someone a, a mistake they've made, something they've done against me, some people don't like to forgive. Remember, all that will be a burden on your shoulder. It might crack your back one day because you have so much on your back. You don't even know which way you're heading. It's heavy. It's a burden. It's something too much for you to handle. The reason is you are not forgiving. Learn to forgive. It's okay. It's okay. I've forgiven you. No matter. You've harmed me. You've done wrong to me. You've backbitten about me. You have said bad words about me. You have perhaps usurped something. It is my right to seek justice. But I want to save myself from the tension, from the stress, from the, the ill feeling, from not only tension and stress, but even becoming sick. Some people become physically ill just because they hold so much of grudge. They hold so much in their heart against people. Learn to forgive. When you forgive, you have actually broken down the mountain 
that was burdening your shoulders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be forgiving. That having been said, let people not take advantage of you because you are forgiving. If people take advantage of you because you are forgiving, sometimes you could be the cause of them committing the same harm against other human beings. This is why be careful. There is a limit for everything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 264 of Surah Al-Baqarah. O you who believe, do not destroy the reward of your charities by bragging about it and by harming. This is the second time. The third time Allah is making mention of it in just a few verses. It shows how important it is. May we be humble. May we be from among those who spend and at the same time who do not harm or brag about it later on. Then we move on to something extremely interesting known as wisdom. Many people have a lot of knowledge. We know a lot. We have information sometimes. And we don't realize that to be able to pass that knowledge on, you need to have some wisdom, some tact. You don't just go to people, swear them, shout them. Sometimes it's difficult to tell them directly because maybe they may not digest it. You need to sometimes break down your statement in a way that they can follow it through. They can understand, they appreciate. Many times we show absolutely no concern when it comes to our fellow Muslims. And then suddenly we start correcting them. It would be better for us to show a concern for them so that when we correct them, they will understand we are genuine people. We are really trying our best to help them, to uplift them. And then they will listen to what we have to say. For example, if you are in a community, you are serving the community, you are helping them, you are trying to uplift them in so many different ways. One day when you tell them, you know, my brothers and sisters, what we are doing here is wrong. They will listen immediately because they've known you for years. They've known you for a period of time and they've known you to be a decent person. This is known as wisdom. It's just a way of doing things. And in the same way, there are so many scenarios where if we apply wisdom, we will be far more effective than if we don't. This is why Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 269, Allah speaks about the gift of wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he bestows wisdom upon whomsoever he wishes and whoever has been granted that wisdom has been granted greatness, goodness, a great goodness, khayran kathiran, a lot of goodness. If Allah has given you wisdom, Allah has given you a lot. If Allah has given you tact, He's given you a lot. He has favored you. He speaks about the same favor that He has bestowed upon Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and the family or the other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He speaks about it. Great favor. And Allah says, but none will remember except those those with sound intellect, they will know what wisdom is all about. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us from those who lack wisdom, not make us from those who say things and spoil the situation rather than benefit and help. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single one of us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about another aspect of spending. Many of us, mashallah, when it comes to zakah, we calculate this zakah. And what happens when we calculate the zakah is we tend to look at the stock that is dead, dead stock. And we give that out to the charities. And we say, wow, I want to come to you with what? With, uh, you know, these irons that I have where you put coal inside and you actually use them. I've got 2000 of those. I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to deduct it from my zakah. But that's dead stock. No one wants it. You try and go and give people those irons that have coal in them. They won't even want them. It's like a toy basically. So Allah is warning us to say, hang on. When you want to give charities, give something decent, something you would accept yourself. That's something that would make you from among those who deserve a reward. 
What reward do I want when I'm only giving out that which is not even going to be used by myself? Remember, yes, there is zakah. Zakah is that which is compulsory. We're talking about that here. And also that which is voluntary. That which is voluntary, there are no restrictions, but let it not be an insult to those whom you are giving it to. For example, you have clothing tattered and torn. Nobody would wear it. You wouldn't even wear it yourself. Then you want to give it as a charity and say, no, do something with it. I'm sure there'll be people who will want to wear it. Hang on. You give that which you wore before it becomes tatty and torn so that someone can make use of it. Open your wardrobe, count the number of dresses you have, count the number of robes or thobes you have or clothes you have and take out that which is good. That's when you will get a reward. Not wait for it to become, you know, tatty or torn or unusable and then say, don't worry, I'm sure there's poor people in Afghanistan or here or there. Astaghfirullah. How can you think that way? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, save yourselves. Save yourselves from accumulating sin rather than goodness. We need to save our good deeds. I want to be charitable. I want to earn a reward. How am I going to earn this reward when I'm giving that which I wouldn't accept myself? Allah says, you would only accept it with the closed eyes. You know, if you're not looking at what you're getting and you just take it like a lucky dip. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabtum O you who believe, spend from the good that we have given you, from the good that you have earned. Wa min and from that which we have produced for you from the earth so the produce that you have spend from it and at the same time the goodness that Allah has bestowed upon you in terms of sustenance spend from it this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying spend from the good of it you know if you are giving produce for example you don't wait for the bananas to become rotten before you give them and say no ways i'm giving this out in charity let me deduct it from my zakah or you wait for the apples to be rotten the avocados to be rotten mashallah they grew in your backyard and you waited for all these fruits or whatever else to become you know that which you cannot even consume and then you give it out as a charity don't do that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and do not intend to give or do not incline towards or do not give that which is khabith. Khabith meaning not good at all, that which is bad. Do not give that which is bad. Do not intend to give that which is bad, unusable. It's not edible. And at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you yourself would not take that type of goods or that type of item, that type of charities. You wouldn't take it yourself unless your eyes were closed and you just had to take it. Which means under rare circumstances, out of a mistake, you might have taken it. But you don't take things like those, yet you want to give it to others. So these verses are just showing us that when we spend in the cause of Allah, give good items. Don't give dead stock. Don't give that which is going to be a burden upon people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. And I want to end off by making mention of very interesting point regarding why people don't give. You know, you see nice things that you have, you have a lot of wealth, you have so much, mashallah. Sometimes people don't give because they fear they are going to become poor. Shaitan comes and makes them a promise and Allah makes them a promise. But Shaitan's promise sometimes overtakes the people. So Allah makes mention of it. Verse number 268 of Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الشَّيْطَانُ يَعِدُكُمُ الْفَقْرَ وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاءِ Shaitan promises you poverty. He makes you believe that you're going to become poor. And he makes you commit immorality. وَاللَّهُ يَعِدُكُمْ مَغْفِرَةً مِّنْهُ وَفَضْلًا Yet Allah is promising you that he will forgive your sins. Give, give that which is good. 
He will forgive your sins and He will grant you increase. He will give you a lot of goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in this world and the next. And may Allah save us from the punishment and torment of this, of this world as well as the hereafter. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.